Headline, Tuesday, September 3rd, 1913. Mendel Bayliss, a Jew in Kiev, Russia, is accused of blood libel and jailed in a harsh Russian jail. This is a most serious charge, claiming that he killed a Russian boy to use his blood for the making of matzo for the Jewish Seder. The world, from Europe to the United States, observe with astonishment, holding rallies and asking lots of questions. We look in the home of the Russian defender of Mendel Bayliss. We see the door open to the modest home of Nikolai Krasikov, where he enters along with Sergei Mulaski and Sergei's wife, Katya Mulaski. Come inside. Oh, that was a wonderful meal. Finally, Semchik has gotten himself a good chef. Hmm? <laughs> My cook has prepared a very special strudel and some cookies for us. Ah, strudel, my favorite food. Next to vodka, of course. Hmm. That goes without saying. <laughs> but as we know, vodka is not a food. It is a way of life and my basic sustenance. And it is time for you to give up that sustenance. <laughs> you have tried over the years, my dear Katya to reform me. For my own well-being, I know, but as I grow older, I am more like a child. You know, if I see it, I want it. <laughs> then put it out of sight, Nikolai. More easily said than done. It creeps out of the cabinet stealthily. Only for you, my dear friend, can a good drink move from place to place without human intervention. And speaking of vodka, I will be right back. I'll bring the strudel out onto the table too. Wait till you taste it. The only good thing about Nikolai's penchant for vodka is that he seems to imbibe indefinitely without ill effects. And without any loss to his mental abilities, I might add. Well, you should know after all the years you two have worked together. Yes, it's been, uh, let me think, about 17 years. Mm. Sergei. Mm. About that rumor going around about Nikolai, is it something we should mention? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, perhaps we should wait to see if he brings it up. I told you the vodka was stealthy. It made not a single move while I was in the kitchen. So, <clears throat> Katya, can you tell us more about how you are keeping our community vital and healthy? Uh, just more of the usual, uh, social affairs, meetings, and a touch of politics. Do you see a lot of your brother and father at, uh, at your meetings? Yes, they are still close and trying to keep connected to the people. Yeah, a good thing to do these days. Still, and above all, it's the people that count. Sometimes, sometimes we forget that. Sometimes even the... Even the Tsar forgets that. Ah, the Tsar forgets nothing, my friend. Especially when his eyes and ears are everywhere. Let's not forget that. No, no serious danger, hmm? I assure you. Lurking around every corner, there seems to be someone trying to curry favor with a local politician who allegedly knows the Tsar personally. The Tsar has friends he doesn't even know he has. <laughs> 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 and uh, what about your work these days, Sergei? Are you letting it interfere with your chest? My priorities, as always, are well conceived and well executed. Chess comes first, along with a good book, then comes work. And how about you? My work. Well, uh, perhaps you have heard the rumor that's on everyone's lips at the courthouse. Well, if you have not, it's a new assignment, the Bayless case. Only the most controversial case in our lifetime, full of trenchant issues. And not without dangers. Yes, as a full life has its dangers. So, Katya, what do you think about Bayless? You know. Is this real? After all this time? People and their holy book, the Torah. The rabbi goes on to say, and I- Friday, September 12th, 1913. 
Judge Bolderev is entering the courtroom, which quiets down as he's seated. The usual arrangement of people is in attendance. I'm here this afternoon to render my decision in this case. We have heard the presentations of both the prosecution and the defense. The prosecution submitted a total of six sworn statements. Although none of this testimony claims to have seen the defendants commit the crime, there is much circumstantial evidence that points to that direction. The defense on their side provided the court three sworn affidavits, Rabbi Levich, Detective Mishuk, and Mr. Weizen. However, no direct alibi for the time of the murder was presented on behalf of the defendant. On the basis of all the evidence provided to the court, I hereby declare that there is sufficient reason to believe the guilt of the defendant. I hereby also confirm that we will proceed to a full trial of this defendant. Such trial is to begin on Thursday, September 25th, 13 days from today. This pretrial hearing is adjourned. Can this be happening? Feels like a dream. It does not look wonderful, but we are by no means without weapons. I will be working this weekend and I will come to see you next week. Better you should get some more evidence. Come see me when you have something good to tell me. I told you, Mr. Krasikov, that you would lose the battle. I suggest for your own well-being, that you carefully consider how vigorous to be in your full trial defense. I know you have much power, but I choose to believe that every man